Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to share to you how you can create a convincing and beautiful sky by applying these seven principles. I know this is a lot and you might be thinking if it's necessary to apply all of these principles in one drawing. Well, the answer is yes and no. Yes, it is necessary to use these principles to create a convincing and realistic sky painting and no, you don't need to use them all in a single drawing. But it's a good practice if you can use all the principles in one drawing but again, it is not required. But try to apply as much as you can so you can produce a much better and believable result. So okay, enough of that introduction and let's get started. The first technique is to use gradient color for the sky. I know this is too obvious. Whenever you have a large area that uses only one color, it's better to use gradient to avoid having a flat and boring composition. So if you have a clear sky without clouds, you must color the top part with a dark and cold color. And at the bottom, you must color it using a light and warm colors. Avoid using white for the lighter part of the gradient since it doesn't look right and it feels artificial and fake so try to avoid white. The second principle is perspective and there are two kinds of perspective. The first is aerial perspective which means that things further away will look paler and cooler in terms of color. And the second kind of perspective is the linear perspective which basically means that the things further away will be much smaller. And this applies to clouds also. The closer the clouds on the viewer, the bigger it looks. But when the clouds get further away from the viewer and closer to the horizon, it gets smaller. By the way, if you want to learn more about the rules and principles of perspective, check out my two other videos discussing it more in depth. When painting a sky, always remember that it is part of the overall scenery. It is part of the landscape, the field, um, the cityscape, or anything that is below it. Even though the sky is above the ground, it is still part of the overall composition. So make sure that there is harmony among all the elements in the scene. One way of achieving this is to reflect and use some of the shapes or colors in a different area of your painting. For example, you can use the color of the sky or the clouds to the other part of your painting. Like you can use the color of the sky to reflect it in the water below or using it to color the other object. Which in this case, I use the blue color of the sky for this structure. You don't need to make the color or shape to be perfectly the same but try to make a subtle similarities to make it more harmonious. The idea is to make a connection and harmony and unity among all the objects in your scene. Contrast is very important because it creates interest and excitement on your painting. You can create contrast using color like this lamppost. It's very dark and it's contrasting the sky. And another example is the mountains at the horizon. It clearly shows the contrast between the mountain and the sky and that's what we need to create. You can also use horizontal and vertical lines to create contrast and also you can use shapes and sizes to create contrast as well, not just colors. Sky doesn't consist of one types of clouds only. Most of the mistake that beginners make when painting sky is that they only use cumulus for the clouds as if that's the only clouds available but there are other cloud types as well and adding them to the sky will create variation and it will greatly enhance your painting. You can try to add three types of clouds to make it more real and to enhance the depth and realism of your painting and of course I have a video dedicated for the three types of clouds. I put the link in the description below if you want to learn more about it. Making an object dominate the others will add interest in your painting. And a good example of this is to make one cloud in the sky larger and stronger than all the others. Always remember to avoid making a uniform and similar clouds since that's not how the clouds look in reality. 
Aside from using the shape to dominate, you can also use color by making some clouds to be darker than the other clouds in the scene. Remember that dominance can be used to enhance the primary focal point or subject of your painting. It can also help you tell a story by using this principle. While you want to create dominance in your painting, it is also important to create balance in your composition. I know it may seem a conflicting idea, but balance enhances the overall composition of your painting. Whereas dominance focuses only on a specific subject, in your painting. If we use our previous example, the clouds can be used as a dominating object among the other clouds. It creates a story for the painting and make it more interesting, but if you look at the overall composition of the painting, it doesn't look balanced at all because of how the elements are arranged. The left side of the composition feels heavier than the right side, and this is because the color and the weight of the structure is mostly on the left side and it even makes it feel heavier because of the dark clouds, which is too dominating, are placed on the left side. The right side doesn't have any elements to balance the composition since it doesn't have any object or any high contrast element in the space. So to fix this, we can just move the dominating clouds on the right side to balance the composition. Even though there are no structures on the right side, the contrast of the clouds, the mountains, and the size of the clouds, all of that are enough to balance out the space. These are the principles you can use to create your next epic sky painting, but this also applies to other subjects, not just the sky and clouds. So feel free to use it as a guide and foundation on your next painting. If you're having trouble painting clouds or you just want to save time, I am shamelessly promoting my new brush pack for Photoshop and Procreate users. It consists of 20 anime style clouds that you can use to create beautiful clouds in sky painting. Most of the clouds I use in this painting are included in this pack, so you can get it on my website, the link is in the description below. And also, I have a Patreon account where you can have access and download some of my artworks I never release publicly. You can get some of my personal selection of Photoshop and Procreate brushes and you will get updates on my personal projects like the short films I'm currently doing right now. And also you can have access to advanced art tutorials and private Discord server where I share some of my advanced art techniques. And lastly and most importantly, you can get discounts to all of the products in my shop. So if you're interested in becoming a patron and would like to support this humble channel, I put the link in the description below so you can check it out and sign up. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and share and click the subscribe button for more videos. See you soon. Take care.